How do BIP47 reusable payment codes work? Now we go to the completely other end of uh, technical questions. This is, a, um, this is not an easy one to explain. So, BIP47 reusable payment codes um, are basically uh, the technology behind what is known as PayNIMS, or um, private anonymous channels. Um, what PayNIMS and private anonymous channels with BIP47 allow you to do is receive a payment from someone where essentially the sender and recipient address are encrypted in such a way that nobody knows um, who they are sending to. Um, where you can have uh, an, an anonymous payment essentially sent from one person to another. The way it works is very, very complex to explain, but basically what it is is, is this. Um, Alice and Bob want to uh, pay each other using this kind of uh, anonymized payment channel or payment code. And Bob sets up what's called a PayNIM. Now, what this PayNIM is effectively is a hierarchical deterministic wallet in which um, Bob publishes um, a digital blob that is a public key and chain code um, under a pseudonym. Um, so let's say Bob calls uh, himself Satoshi Nakamoto and publishes a PayNIM for Satoshi Nakamoto, which has within it a public key. Um, Bob is monitoring output transactions to that public key. Now, Alice could just pay that public key. The problem is then everybody who knows which PayNIM belongs to Bob or the one that's advertised Satoshi Nakamoto would be able to see all of those payments and at that point uh, track all the payments to Bob, and that's a problem. Uh, if if there's no secure mechanism for Bob to get information out. Uh, about other addresses they want to get paid on. Again, this is a problem. So, how how do payment codes work around this? Alice constructs a special transaction that sends to one of Bob's um, addresses, which is called uh, a watching address. Sends what's called a notification message, and this is not a payment. Instead, it's an op return output. It's a data output that contains 80 bytes. And what these 80 bytes are are the basis for uh, an elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman key exchange. Now, this is the part that's really difficult to explain, which is what Diffie-Hellman key exchange is. Diffie-Hellman key exchange, technique invented in the 70s, that allows two parties to construct a secret key based on their knowledge of each other's public keys in such a way that no one can intercept that secret key, and the two parties can use it to communicate uh, with each other. Um, this is what is actually used for VPNs. When you do a VPN, what you use is the public key of the VPN provider and your public key to set up um, a secret key that is used to encrypt that particular VPN channel for that period of time as you use it. Alice uses Bob's public key that is embedded in the PayNIM, the uh, identity uh, uh, payment code, and uh, constructs a secret key. That secret key is then used for both Bob and Alice to generate temporary Bitcoin addresses that they can make payments to each other back and forth, that no one can know which Bitcoin addresses these will be without having access to the shared secret between Alice and Bob. Once Alice and Bob have exchanged this shared secret through posting these notification transactions, they can now exchange up to four billion payments between each other that appear to be going to um, seemingly random Bitcoin addresses that each of the two of them can generate for each other uh, without anybody being able to associate them back to the original PayNIM. So what you have essentially is a single public address, which is the PayNIM, uh, the pseudonym public key that Bob publishes for Alice to pay. And that's the only thing that's public. And the only thing that can do 
is be used to establish the secret payment channels that then allow Alice and Bob to exchange payments with each other um, in a way that is invisible to the rest of the blockchain, can't be associated to the rest of the blockchain. If you were to watch Bob's address, what you would see is uh, you would be able to see Alice's notification, um, but you wouldn't be able to decrypt the, the blob, because that is encrypted to Bob's uh, public key. And you wouldn't be able to see the response that Bob sends back, because that is also going to be encrypted. And then once they have a common secret, they would be able to send on completely different Bitcoin addresses payments that you would never uh, be able to associate back to the payment. So, a very public identifier, hey, it is me, pay me here, followed by a series of very private transactions where they are not associated at all with that public identifier. So what do reusable payment codes solve? <coughs> they solve the situation that in order to be paid by people out there, if I wanted to get paid by people, um, I would have to post an address. In fact, I already do that. I have an address on my website, 1andreas, 3bat, etc., um, which people can send donations to and, and give me gifts, effectively. Um, the problem is that everyone can see all of the gifts going to that. So if I make a public address available, then I also make all of the payments to that public address available. I can't do a public address with private transactions, except I can with reusable payment codes. I would be able to post a very public ID um, that everyone can send payments to, but none of the payments are visible to anybody else, because all of the payments are sent based on these privately um, negotiated elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman key exchanges that happen um, using the payment. I hope that was a good explanation. It's a very uh, difficult topic to explain. If you look at the BIP 47, the BIP, the Bitcoin Improvement Proposal, it has some very useful charts and diagrams that show the time progression of the notification payment and then the subsequent payments and which addresses. Uh, Alice and Bob are watching in order to establish this uh, series of secret Bitcoin addresses between them.